Jane Seymour burst onto the scene as an exotic beauty in the James Bond film Live and Let Die, and quickly ascended to star in miniseries blockbusters like War and Remembrance and East of Eden, and of course the long-running series Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. How would you support the two of you? Work for Miss Olive. Ranchy? What's wrong with ranch? Nothing, but why rush into it when you have the rest of your I life? I want to spend the rest of my life with Ingrid. This is ridiculous. At age 45, Jane gave birth to twins, which inspired her and her husband, director James Keach, to write a new series of children's books on display at the Barnes & Noble in Manhattan. Jane Seymour and James Keach, welcome to our corner table. Thank you. Now, what do you think about this as a cafe in a modest little bookstore, huh? I think this is great. I mean, it fulfills all one's needs. You can browse and read and but have coffee. But compared when we were in school, right, you think the little coffee shops and the yeah. little bookstores. Well, there's no cigarettes in here for one thing. No, that now helps. Guy, raspberry, <laughs> raspberry latte, caramel, <laughs> mocha, and one of these Starbucks frappuccinos, which I'm addicted to. Oh, I know. Those are the best, aren't they? I can get pretty wired up during this. How's, how's the family? Six children in all? Yeah, it's a lot of family. <laughs> And, uh, and a, let's say an estate in Malibu. Right. right. Well, I wouldn't call it an estate. Well, no, 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 it's an estate no. in Malibu. And a, it's, a, uh, it's a modest home in Malibu. It's a family home in Malibu. And a 15th century castle in yeah. England near Malibu. A modest little pad in England. Yeah, I can see that. You know? <laughs> this seems to be, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a wonderful balance between the materialism of Southern California and the stability of England. Well, there is something about, actually, the house dates back a thousand years. So there is. For me, there's the sense that when you're walking on those stone floors and you're and you have those sort of old beams around you that it's been there for a thousand years. Some of it. it's amazing. That you feel it's going to last for a lot longer. Who, Who dusts the cat? Actually, Jane I do. Jane does. Jane does. <laughs> it's a lot of housework. So, and I, I do the so 900 years of deferred maintenance. Yeah, I, I'm doing I do all the, the spiders. <laughs> I relocate spiders. I won't kill them, but I relocate. Them. Jane and Jim are a husband and wife team who've worked together in TV films. And James has had to direct his wife in several steamy love scenes. Now, I'm not trying to stir something up, but it is, it's, I think it's an interesting thing, actually, to be in a position of directing one's wife in love scenes. You also directed in Dr. Quinn, love scenes I've with directed Orlando. Her in, I directed about 10 movies in love scenes. So, is any difficulty in that at all? Yeah, it wasn't a little harder, or the, I need a bigger hug there. The, the, no, actually, I... Before the, you actually got involved with me, then it was, it was harder. No, it wasn't. Oh, you, you weren't that crazy. Calumet, Calumet is supposed to be harder. <laughs> actually, I, I think that once we got married, I remember we did a one love scene, only and you one. said, it and you so said funny. to this guy, you said, take your hands off my wife. I always say that. I always say that. Joking. I was like, take your hands off my no, wife. No, there was, there was actually there one was funny There was one show we were doing a movie called Praying Mantis, and Barry Bostwick, who's on right. Spin, said, yeah, sure. was playing opposite Jane. That scene. was the love interest in that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. And, and Jane, Jane was actually playing a, a villainess in that one. And I was it's already a in very bed. hot love scene, and Jane was already in bed under the covers, and supposedly, you know, unclad. What, by the way, just a quick thing: when you're doing a love scene in bed like that, what are you really wearing under the covers? Well, it depends on the shot, but I mean, usually a pair of um, nude underwear. But that's about I it. I usually get down and a, to, and, I, and, I get and a couple of sheets. You know, you get naked. Oh yeah, <laughs> I make everybody relax. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, but so what Barry, happened? She, she's so in bed Barry with Barry. Walks in. We are not married at this point, right? And but you're. Liking really, each other yeah, very I much. I love her to death. I still do. Anyway, Barry comes walking in, and he gets... In the boxes. The, in his boxer shorts, and that's all. And he gets under the covers, and he says, uh, James. And he hands me his boxer shorts. He says, no, okay. In front of the whole crew. I, in front of the whole crew. I'm ready to go now. <laughs> and uh, I... <laughs> The, you know that feeling where the blood rushes up in your head? Oh, I've had it. You know, but you don't say anything. You're just going to go, I'm a professional. I'm not going to embarrass myself or my wife. I said, all right, roll it. And action. They do the whole scene. Right. I'm like, I don't know. How should I react to this? Should I say print? Should I say cut? Should I just jump him? You know? <laughs> what should I do? And he goes, and I say, all right. And cut. That was really good. Really good. And very then gets up out of the bed, and I'm expecting to see him start naked, of course. He's got another pair, pair of eyes. <laughs> and, and did you know? You knew, did you? I guess you did. did. These yeah. guys did. It, That's funny. But, you know, I didn't know he was going to do that, but James really. Rooney, you got up tight. I didn't really. Well, <laughs> I think he did. I, could, I think he's still a little residual. No, no, now, Jane, funny. could you do what he does? Could you direct your husband in love scenes? If you have I have trouble directing him in anything, like, you know, it's time to go now, things like that, you know. Let's not miss this airplane. I can't direct him in life. That, he doesn't take good direction? I, 
he doesn't like me to direct him. Ah. Uh, but I am dying to direct. I'd like to direct you in the love scene. I really. You do actually, every night. You oh, know, we, we, we <laughs> made. <laughs> well, when I was, uh, you know, I'm saying to folks that uh, you were coming to join us in the, the corner table, three or four women said, I must ask Jane this question. So here's the question. Okay. You had the twins, and we're going to talk about the books in a second. You had the twins, and then miraculously appeared on the Emmy Awards, what seemed to be a week later, in a skin-tight dress. How did you do it? <laughs> That's what they still want to know. Well, I think, uh, well, first of all, I didn't put any weight on other than baby weight. Other than so. the twins. But there was a lot of weight. There was like 55 pounds of that, I think. It was oh, huge. I can't remember. It was, it was like 55 inches. 54 pounds. She looked like she was carrying a Volkswagen yes. in front of her. But if you look at it from behind, <laughs> she looked I didn't look pregnant. She looked actually better than she did before she got pregnant. Yeah. Ooh, I think, because I she think was in such good shape carrying that weight. Yes, mm. the babies actually ate away all the excess fat and just left me with the, you know, baby couch. But that uh, I think, you know, being nominated and realizing I was going to have to show up, there was a certain incentive there. I, I didn't exactly go to hit the cream pies, you know, and say, let's have a triple chocolate disaster. I, I swear. I was doing that. Yeah. It would be well, nice to wear this dress, wouldn't it? <laughs> In the This One and That One books, which will become an animated TV show, mother and father Jane and Jim are parent cats, and their twins are the kittens. How did the project begin? We kind of did everything on this thing blindly. We got this idea, and we said, you know, this is so much fun. Let's do. Let's go see if we can sell it in New York as a book. We did originally for the kids. We yeah, did we did for originally for our you know. children. You know, and actually, it started sitting around a table at St. Catherine's during dinner. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Plater came over with all of Jane's mm -hmm. sisters. She has two sisters. Her mother was there. We all drew ourselves as cats. And we all drew ourselves as cats. So, what would we be like as cats? And so that kind of spurred the idea. This is very 60s. Well, you know, this is like, it's like it is. This is like flower power. You're sitting around drawing it. This is great. I like it. The twins are featured commercially as the Gerber babies. But how does Jane feel about her children being shown to the public? It's, you know, I, learned to, I learned a lesson a while back. I went to a premiere, and I remember Steven Spielberg was there with his son Max. And Max had never, ever been out in public. And all of a sudden, he came to this premiere. I think it was one of his dad's films. And he should have been having fun. And he was just blitzed with these cameras. And he was absolutely freaked out because he'd never seen anything like it in his life. And my kids were there, and they were just OK with it. And Stephen looked at me and said, how, how come they're not freaking they out? Not, and yeah. I said, well, because a long time ago, I realized that every time we went through London Airport, people would be taking their pictures. And the only other thing I could do would put people to you know, a coat or something over their heads. And then they'd be wondering why I'm hiding them. You know, am I not proud of them? And so we just, we try to find a healthy medium. She puts medium. a coat over my head. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you know, we, we don't take them out in public a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. We certainly don't take them to lots of premieres and things, but we don't go nuts about not letting them be. They'd be seen. welcome here, but so yeah. you've never <laughs> been in your career one of those, no, 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 don't take a picture of me type people. I learned a long time ago, no. actually, David Frost said to me, he said that the best defense is to always smile when you go in and, in and out of any building. And yeah. he said the worse your life is, the more crisis you're in, the bigger your smile, because then they can't print the nasty article because they don't have a really sad, you know, they miserable... They always give them a happy... Yes, oh they can't print the story. And now, after they've worked up an appetite autographing books for fans, it's snack time with Jane and James. It's going to be great for my favorite. Cheesecake, uh, anything? Uh, Apply this directly anything here? to your thighs. Yes. A <laughs> <laughs> little sugar shock. Um, you know, I was. you seem so sh serene. As you sit here next to me, I notice this very calmness about you, and yet you play these evil, tortured characters. Not all the time, not like Dr. Quinn. Why? Why have you gone in that direction as an actress? Well, I think the serenity thing is a necessity with the chaos of my life. And so, you know, that's just the only way just to cope. Um, and I, I love, I'm fascinated by playing really evil people. This is the I worst like, one you ever played. Well, I think East of Eden was pretty bad. She was pretty bad. Praying Mantis, you know, she killed all her husbands on the wedding night. <laughs> I took that very seriously since we weren't married. Yes, yeah. I'm really careful about that. You know, you're referred to as a queen of the miniseries, right? Now, TV is not really producing that many miniseries. Do you feel like you're a queen in exile? I think I'm the, the queen of uh, long-running family series that have been let go of for yeah. no really good reason. Well, how do you feel about <laughs> that? Obviously, we know you're yeah. upset that Dr. Quinn was canceled. I mean, you made a major public statement. Now, it's that some time has passed since then. Are you still angry at CBS? You know, I'm not angry at CBS. I was working for CBS when it was canceled. I, I was a little unfortunate that they didn't, they didn't tell me. Right. You know, because I, I thought we were going to be picked up. So it wasn't, the statement I made was actually to the fans. The most amazing things happen, I don't know if you know this, but the fans 
And there's been a huge outcry worldwide about oh, the cancellation know. of Dr. Quinn. And I felt that it was only uh, appropriate for me to acknowledge their love of the show and their distress at losing it. And your, your, yeah, <laughs> yeah. your philosophy, one of your philosophies of life is that I've heard, it, it, underneath every problem is an opportunity. Yes. How has the cancellation of Dr. Quinn provided you with an opportunity? Well, um, obviously I'm available. Here I am. <laughs> See what I we need is Harrison Ford you. and you. Oh, that, that would be we got the film. Actually, I've, I've be been offered good. some wonderful projects, um, most of which I'm going to be doing in the new year. Uh, at, at this point, you know, I'm helping launch the book, and James is, is directing movies, so I'm going to go and help him out and be behind the scenes there and spend some time with my kids. And continue writing the book. Well, I have somebody. I, want, I went okay. for a trip through the magazines. There are more unusual magazines in this store than probably any other store you could go to anywhere in the United States. So I picked out a couple of magazines. Now, I want to do this very uh -oh. quickly to see what, how you'll answer these questions. Okay. First one, who ever heard of a book called Puppies Quarterly? Cute, Puppies right? Quarterly, very cute. What's your favorite pet you've ever had in your life? Jane? I love puppies. I mean, the favorite, favorite pet, pet you ever, ever had? Favorite pet ever. Well, I used to breed frogs. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Say no more. Partnership magazine. This is a magazine for marriage partnerships, actually published for people like you. And it says, career Bust versus marriage can both win. And, and a busting bedroom boredom. <laughs> I, I'll take I think tips this is, on either. I, I think this is for people who are having problems and need help. It's your and don't want to pay for therapy. This, is, this right? is wild. Yeah. They don't want to pay for therapy. This is a quick way to sell, sell them some. Well, that, that's can, a... um, <laughs> can career versus marriage, can both win? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, fine. <laughs> Cooking light, the quick and easy pasta sauce. Obviously, you're both in good shape. And be serious for a second. One or two tips. How, do, how have you stayed so trim and, and beautiful all these years? Well, that's very food. kind of you to say. I love food, but I happen to love salad. I love, um, actually, I love pasta with um, fresh tomato and basil. And, and we love grilled fish and grilled chicken. and. We eat, um, and we love Japanese food, don't we? And what uh, don't you eat? I don't know why. I, I eat, I mean, I I eat, I eat everything I in moderation. Eat. Really? So yes, you would I mean, have I a actually, little of this? I'm actually capable of having about four bites of this and not really wanting any more of it. I have a bite, Jim. Yeah. Of hers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want mine. You want hmm. mine. I always want yours. To turn, to turn the page back a little bit, we go back all the way back to the first time I ever remember seeing you or hearing of Jane Seymour, the James Bond movie called <laughs> Live and Let Die. You were the exotic beauty in that movie. Since then, you know, that was a long time ago. When it was your, your couple premiere. Years. Yeah, a couple years ago. <laughs> Do you, have you bothered to see any James Bond movies in the last eight or ten years? Do you go to them at all? I think we did see one. And, we saw um, Pierce. Yes, we, we loved saw it. Pierce. Pierce is terrific. He's great. Mm. So you're still oh, talking yeah. about James oh, yes. Bond. Oh, yeah. Actually, um, Pierce, Pierce has an office right next to us, so we see a lot of Pierce. He's a great guy. Yeah. And how about Christmas at the castle? Ah. What's it take to get invited? Uh, um, excuse me. How about Christmas at the castle? <laughs> You're invited. Thank you. So what is it? I knew it would Christmas work. At the Christmas castle. at the castle. Tell me what it's like. How about Christmas in well, England at your house? Christmas yeah. at your, your home your, in England yeah, and bath in England. Yeah. What's it like? Well, it's pretty magic because we live in this little village and the entire village comes and to the church, which is on our property. They have a service before Christmas and then they all come and sing carols in our ballroom mm -hmm. and we have mince and we have pies lots and mulled wine. And, and so everybody's always going out and getting more presents oh, for the kids. Oh, a huge so tree. Christmas in our house is for the children. And all the kids really believe, a lot of them still believe in Santa Claus. So we actually have to wait till they go to sleep and they do sort of keep their eyes open so they, they're searching and they, for And they all write letters <laughs> to, to Santa Claus. And what's your traditional. traditional Christmas dinner that you serve at the castle? Well we, we, we have well, we put on our chain mail. <laughs> All the guys do it. We, get our, we, we, that we, we don't come to the table with our broadswords on. You know? and, uh, we, we, have, uh, we have roast turkey and uh, at least two or three different kinds of stuffing because everyone always has a different recipe that they yeah. have to have. So we, we have a competitive stuffing combination. And, we uh, could have competitive stuffing now if yeah. we want. Exactly. <laughs> and we eat far too much. And then somehow having completely bloated ourselves with that dreadful English Christmas pudding thing that you know that you have on yeah. fire that never ignites when you want it to. So by the time you get it, it's like it's pure alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are all now drunk from this stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty wild. Then everyone, of course, hits the chocolate box, and that's it. Let's hit the chocolate box. We'll yeah. take a break. We'll be back after this. <laughs> We could be, other than your wonderful homes, if you two could be beamed up and beamed down anywhere in the world for dinner tonight, a romantic dinner, where would you like to be? Tuscany. Have the restaurant in mind? No, it's just anywhere. 
I'd like to be with her. I <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be serving you. Okay. That'll be cool. All right, now, for both of you, quickly, at age 12, what was a typical dinner table like around your house on a Tuesday night, James? Uh, on a Tuesday night? It was a typical weeknight dinner table. You're 12 years old. What did you see? Um, the, my dad coming home from doing the Lone Ranger. My mom saying, okay, it's time to sit down for dinner. Everybody saying grace and having, like, leg of lamb. And what did your something. father do with the Lone Ranger? He's an actor. He was on the Lone Ranger? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did he play? He, my dad used to tell me stories about, he had he played many different parts. But my, the story I remember the most is my dad saying, today I got to play both the good guy and the bad guy. <laughs> I said, what did you mean? He said, well, when I was the good guy, I had the white hat on and I was talking to the Lone Ranger. And then we kept riding around the rock. And as we go around the rock, they'd give me a dark hat. And then I'd ride around. They did a chase. And then he'd put the hat on. So they didn't have enough money for the different extras. Jane, how about you? You're 12 years old. Typical dinner table at home. Well, it wasn't, I mean, typical for me would be the whole family would be together and my father would be discussing the surgery he'd done for the day and Probably sometimes there'd be some little speckles of blood on his um, <laughs> glasses left over from surgery. Wow. And, uh, and my mother, who'd survived a concentration camp, would make sure that we all ate everything. Everything. And what's a typical <laughs> dinner table like now in your home, one of your homes on a weeknight dinner? It's, uh, it's full of children. We have the babies who usually have eaten earlier, but they always want to come and sit down with us. So they tend to eat our food as well as their food. We have the teenagers all discussing whether or not we trying were right to, get, to. Trying to get one of them to eat, one in particular, Sean. It's every night, the same conversation. Sean, would you eat cooking? You have a cook or do you cook, Jane? We have a housekeeper who helps us with cooking. I can cook and sometimes I do cook, but it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm running around, you know, I have to make sure they all get fed. So. What's Jane's best dish? If she had to put one out there, you know. I would say Harrison Ford's pasta. coming for dinner. What I would do you say want? The, the pasta, pasta dishes, dishes that she makes. Yeah. I can make and them in the, three and minutes. The sauces, yeah, they're, <laughs> and they're fabulous. What What's one example of one? Um. Well, uh, the, the three minute one would be with um, fresh vegetables and um, pesto and um, sort of al dente pasta. That's, that's my kind of food. Yeah. Now, if we could all, God willing, come back ten years from now, sit here at this table. 10 years of our lives have passed. What do you want to say about that 10 year interval in your life? What's it been like? Happy. That's a good word. Happy. <laughs> so like, happy uh, and fun. And yeah, I would say happy, joyous, free. Yeah. Free of any kind of uh, worry about the business and about the state of the world. I would like to come back and all of us sit down and go, wow, life is great. You're obviously a very happy married couple. Yeah. What's one little secret that you could give us? A good happy marriage. Stay together. Yeah. Just stick with do, it. Do stuff together and, and like he says, have passion. I mean, we have not, not just passion, obviously, for one another, but we have passion for the things that we do together and we do a lot of things together. And, and I would say also that uh, she will try the, th she will go out and do the I play golf is what he wants to tell you. I she, do yeah, and play I paint. golf. <laughs> and I paint. Cut, let's cut to the quick. She'll, she'll pay, she'll, 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 you know, on I'm, Sundays. I'm about to break 200. <laughs> <laughs> on nine yeah. holes. Oh, Actually, nine. in 10 years, I would have liked to have shot in the 60s at least once. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> well, listen, you've, you've created a wonderful new thing that's going to be with us for a long time in the, this you. one and that series. So let's hope 10 years from now, there's been a big animated show, there's been a radio show, the kids are doing whatever they want to do. We're all back and still able to eat desserts. I thank you. Let us toast, if you will, whatever you would like to say to our Food Network viewers to end the show. Your toast. Ooh, your call. Our toast. To health, happiness, and love. And family. Health, happiness, love, and family. Thank you very much. Thank Jane you. James this has been fun. We better take some of these to go. Though.